WFYI podcast brought to you by Bloomington, Indiana, an American college town offering food and drink, college sports, outdoor activities, live music, cool art, and good times daily. Everyone is welcome in Bloomington. More information at visitbloomington.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's March 14th, and I'm Abriana Heron. On today's show, the Blue Line was recommended to receive about $140 million. Indy Summer Learning Labs is hiring. And we've got a conversation with the Senior Vice Provost for Purdue and Indianapolis, who's looking ahead of the university split from Indiana University in Indianapolis and the end of IUPUI. Well, first, if you look across the street, you'll see Purdue banners going up. This is a fully Purdue presence in Indianapolis. Those stories coming up. But first, a new housing project is being planned for older residents on the far east side. WFYI's Jill Sheridan reports the development uses a mix of funding solutions to create more than 200 new units of housing. The Sun Spring apartment complex will use federal and local tax programs to build and run the complex on the far east side. Developers enter into a 30-year pilot or payment in lieu of taxes agreement with the city. The proposal spearheaded by Councilwoman Lakeisha Jackson aims to help low to moderate income senior residents as there's a growing need. The senior population will be one of the largest populations, growing populations that will be unhoused and will also be supporting other demographics like family members, grandchildren and children. Families and individuals over 55 years old will be able to apply for one of the 208 affordable units. The apartment complex also plans to offer social services to residents, including transportation, an on-site food pantry, and financial assistance. I'm Jill Sheridan. The Blue Line Rapid Transit System has been recommended to receive roughly $140 million in support from the federal government. As WFYI's Ben Thorpe reports, the news comes just weeks after the Blue Line Rapid Transit System was saved from a bill that would have scuttled those funds. Indigo officials warned lawmakers during testimony on a bill that would have paused construction of the Blue Line that the delay would likely threaten millions of dollars in federal funds. Only a last-minute negotiation between key lawmakers and Indianapolis officials was able to halt the bill's passage. Now those federal funds are likely secured, with the Federal Transit Administration announcing this week that the Blue Line bus system was among 14 large transit projects recommended to receive grant funding. The funding was part of President Biden's budget request to Congress. In a statement, Indigo officials said that they were, quote, grateful to the Federal Transit Administration for their continued confidence in our Blue Line project. I'm Ben Thorpe. Indy Summer Learning Labs is hiring for their summer instructional programs. From WFYI's Education Desk, Sydney Dauphiné has more on the five-week summer academic program. Indy Summer Learning Labs was launched by United Way of Central Indiana and local nonprofit The Mind Trust in 2021 as a response to learning loss from the pandemic. It is a free or low-cost five-week academic program for students from first to ninth grade. The focus is on reading and math. There are around 250 open positions for classroom assistants, English and math teachers, and supervising teachers. Program information and applications can be found online at IndieLearningLabs.com. I'm Sydney Dauphiné. And for our final story today, David Umulus is the senior vice provost for Purdue in Indianapolis, which officially opens its doors July 1st. Ben Thorpe sat down with Umulus to discuss how he'll lead Purdue in Indianapolis through its split with Indiana University as IUPUI officially becomes two. A big part of your role, as I understand it, will be overseeing this split between Indiana University and Purdue University here in Indianapolis, with the official separation beginning here in July of this year. What changes might students and the public kind of notice around the city? Well, first, if you look across the street, you'll see Purdue banners going up. This is a a fully Purdue presence in Indianapolis, and you'll see that the, the banners say Purdue University. That is a, an extension of West Lafayette, which is the critical thing, which means we're going to have more Purdue students here. That's just part of the beginning of what we're going to be doing as an extension of this campus. 
I think it's fair to say that Indiana University's footprint here in Indianapolis, especially around IUPUI campus, felt more visible before this split. And maybe you can talk about how will Purdue work to stand out after this separation? First, we want to stand out by the focus of the quality of our programs and the educational experiences that our students are going to have. We're starting with programs in engineering, computer science, polytech, and these are programs that as a STEM education that, we're, that we've developed over years. We, will, we have 28 acres just to the north here where we have future plans um, to grow the, the, the heartbeat of Purdue University in Indianapolis. We have other uh, partners and other discussions that are ongoing for other areas throughout the city. We really want to be woven into the fabric of the city um, and not just be in one location. We'll have a heartbeat in one location, but we'll, we'll have academic programs, master's degree programs um, that, that are participating in uh, close proximity with corporate partners throughout the city. I, you know, you're mentioning kind of the science and technology programs. I've noticed that both IU Indianapolis and Purdue in Indianapolis will be working to expand science and technology program offerings. And it feels like there might be some overlap there. How is what Purdue and IU offer here in Indianapolis going to be different? We really come and approach the problem with different backgrounds and with different strengths. So we will have um, some overlap in some degrees, but competition is healthy. And I think the city will benefit from this. And uh, we also, I think we, we, we wanna raise, we both have the same goals in mind about raising the status and the quality of the workforce that we can give to the city and that the city can lean on. We do it in different ways. We'll have areas where we compete and areas where we're going to be mutually reinforcing. Uh, you know, Purdue feels like a bigger and bigger player in Indiana's economic development plans, especially with the planning around this hard tech corridor that Purdue President Meng Chang has described. What role will Purdue in Indianapolis play in some of these broader economic development plans that the state is, is beginning to kind of reveal to us? So the, there's two bookends to the hard tech corridor. We have West Lafayette. A lot of programs make a lot of sense in that physical location, whether that be chip fabs, hypersonics research. Um, we have, this is the other bookend of the hard tech corridor. We have other local partners that are right down the street from us now that we're really eager to partner with. Companies here that have been here and are, are critical for the state, including Eli Lilly, Roche, Elanco, um, and, and, and several others that we are, we are eager to continue to support um, with, the, with the students that we graduate. Importantly, in the middle is a really interesting uh, innovative investment called the Leap District in Lebanon for high-tech manufacturing that is just about exactly between Purdue West Lafayette and Indianapolis and will be uh, a growing uh, center for the high-tech manufacturing of the future. So we want to provide the workforce that will fill that, that will lead those positions, that will raise the status of what the companies are doing in this state keeping talent here to make the economic development here thrive. David, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Absolutely. Thank you, Ben. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Darian Benson, Drew Dodlin, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Abriana Heron. Our news director is Sarah Neil Estes. If you like today's episode, remember to subscribe and share and follow WFYI on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube to check in on our newsroom throughout the day. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow.